All right, if I could have all the counselors uh, where we need to be. All right, this evening we're going to call the meeting to order. Let the record reflect that it is 5.02 and we're calling the, me the special meeting of the city council to order. I will be presiding this evening. Uh, mayor Kentai is not able to be here tonight. Uh, a lot of people think that the mayor just, uh, his only job is to preside over city council meetings, but uh, the mayor uh, keeps a very busy schedule doing things in our community uh, per his um, uh, elected office as mayor. And tonight is one of those nights. Uh, the mayor's not one to renege on um, uh, commitments that he has made, and he made a commitment to be at the Iglesia Bautista I don't, I, I, I don't know if the name of the Iglesia Bautista Primero or España, but it's over on Garden. It's uh, uh, Jean de los Santos is the pastor. They are hosting uh, the conference. I don't know if it's a statewide or regional conference there, and they had requested the mayor to come and to share with them a little bit, so he is going to keep that commitment as well as he should. He may join us later on this evening, but that is where he is. At this time, let's call, we've called the meeting to order. If we could have roll call, please. Councilor Moore. Councillor Moore, are you on go to? Councillor Sanchez? Councillor Foster? Here. Councillor Kennard? Here. Councillor Perry? Here. Councillor Stubbs? Here. Councillor Robeck? Here. Councillor Best? Here. Councillor Oropesa? Here. Mayor Kintai is absent. Mayor Pro Tem Perry, you do have a quorum. Fantastic. Thank you. I would. Uh, entertain a, an approval of the agenda um, I move to uh, approve the agenda for the July 22nd 2021 special City Council meeting we have a motion in a second and let me just let you know we will not be utilizing the boxes tonight uh, but we are utilizing the microphone so make sure you turn that on we have a motion but we did not get to hear who the second came from if you can second councillor foster is get the second but we will not be using the vote boxes this evening okay we have a motion a second to approve the agenda as presented any discussion all in favor signify by, by aye. saying aye. Aye. aye aye all opposed by the same sign mayor pro tem um, for the record uh, councillor moore has joined us as go to meeting fantastic so councillor moore is with us as well uh, let me just say the one thing we don't usually have meetings that are run by mayor pro tem the difference between me and the mayor tonight is I do get to vote. And so I just want to, since he likes to make that known he doesn't get to vote, I just want to make sure you knew. As well. Was that? I said I bet there are other differences as well. Yes, ma'am. All right. So we will move forward with uh, action item uh, number two. If we could, let's move forward with that and see what we have there with the proposed ordinance 21-29. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, let me just premise this by saying, first of all, that um, this is coming from from the legal committee and the ordinance that uh, uh, draft that you have in your packet is not the one that we approved to recommend to council during our legal committee meeting. So are there copies of the one? Do you have? Are they are they distributed? Councillor Stubbs, the only copies of the ones I have is what originally Kevin passed out at legal committee. I don't have a copy of the changes that you made at legal. No, of course you wouldn't. I'm sorry. Yeah. So do do we have those up here? Okay. So um, with knowing that you have that in front of you, uh, Mr. Mayor, this is Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. This is at the recommendation of the uh, legal committee that I move uh, to um, advertise for a public hearing to be held on August 12th, um, 2021, the proposed ordinance 21-09, um, which is the um, amending city code to provide for a new chapter 27 cannabis with the recommendation to approve uh, with the changes that are recommended today by by legal committee 
Second. We have motion by Councilor Stubbs and a second by Councilor Foster. Let's move to staff for some, some understanding. Mr. Mavers. Good evening, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and Councilors. Tonight we have before you a very amended version of the ordinance. You should have it in front of you at the red line version dated today at the top. It is version, I believe, 5.2 of our uh, proposed cannabis ordinance. I want to make sure that everybody understands that this is the first draft of what will be a multi-phase process. The actual ordinance itself is up to about 60 pages long now at this point because it is a comprehensive ordinance you are getting the first part of it this is the part that we've gone through multiple times and we have been able to edit it down so at this point we are asking that you consider the approval to advertise to hold a public hearing and vote on ordinance 21-09 which will create a brand new chapter within the municipal code it'll be chapter 27 of the roswell code entitled the city of roswell comprehensive cannabis ordinance a little bit of background uh, that on this, of course, uh, the New Mexico legislature uh, did approve the statewide cannabis ordinance uh, earlier the, in the year. It established the regulatory framework for the possession, cultivation, manufacture, and sale of cannabis and cannabis-derived products. Now, the Cannabis Regulation Act provides that local jurisdictions, and this is a key phrase, may ad adopt time, place, and manner rules that do not conflict with the Cannabis Regulation Act or the D. Johnson Clean Air Act, including the rules that reasonably limit density. In other words, we can limit the number of locations within a, ge a given geographic area, the number of licenses, and the operating times consistent with neighborhood uses. One of the reasons we're pushing this forward at a special meeting is because of the limited time frame we have to act to get something in place. The state is moving forward. In fact, there was a very big, uh, very well attended meeting. Some of us had a difficult time getting in yesterday of the New Mexico Municipal League, which uh, Linda Trujillo, the superintendent of the, the uh, I'm going to get this wrong again, the, the Cannabis, Cannabis Control, Control Division, Division, the CCD, Cannabis Control Division. We will get that. There is uh, uh, a lot of different versions of various different control divisions out there, but the CCD, uh, they will begin accepting and processing license as early as September 1st. So we have to have our controls, our regulations, our rules in place so that people can start applying for licenses. No later than January 1st, those licenses uh, will begin, uh, will be being issued for people to begin conducting activity under the medical licensing program, medical cannabis program. And then we'll also, though, this is interesting and kind of unique to New Mexico. I've never seen this before. Begin licensing cannabis training and education programs. That is something that's been an outgrowth of a number of other states, uh, but there is an entire section on that. They'll uh, cannabis server permits. You've probably heard euphemistically the word bud tender. Okay. This is a cannabis server permit for those on-site consumption lounges that they're hoping to get approved. And then the CCD will accept and begin processing license applications for all license types. And then no later than April of next year, retail sales of commercial cannabis are set to begin. So we've got a very short time frame. Just establishing the ordinance itself is only part one from a staff perspective. Uh, and what you have here is part 1A of part one in front of you tonight, okay? The ordinance, again, will begin processing and enacting the controls to restrict the possession, cultivation, manufacture, and sale of cannabis. And the intent of this ordinance, the one that you have in front of you right now, is to establish that general framework for the regulation. We do, however, and everyone needs to understand that, anticipate adopting addition, we're not anticipating, we will be adopting additional regulations as time goes on. For those of you that attended the NMML meeting yesterday, the superintendent was quite nonspecific in the answer to an answers to a number of questions. Many of her answers were, we don't know, we're working on that, we'll let you know as soon as we do, kind of things. Okay? Uh, but we have to be prepared for every eventuality. So you can expect that we will be talking about cannabis at every meeting for the foreseeable future. Okay? Our legal committee recommendation, which we just got about 15 minutes ago, 
okay, is that uh, they have reviewed the ordinance and they are recommending to the full city council to consider approval to advertise and hold a public hearing and vote on ordinance 2109, which will create chapter 27 of the Rosmel Municipal Code, adopting and then creating the rules and the regulatory framework for comprehensive cannabis, a comprehensive cannabis ordinance. Unless there's okay. any other questions. So what I'd like to do is, uh, before we open up there again, we're not going to be using our boxes, so the request to speak button is not going to work tonight. Raise your hand. I'll try to keep a list the best we can. I want to go back to uh, uh, Councilor Stubbs, who chairs the legal committee, to see if there's any additional information she would like to share before we open for uh, Council to have general questions and comments. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, just a few things uh, in the copy that you have in front of you that I'd like to at least bring to your attention and I'd like uh, Kevin to address just very quickly. I think it's important. Obviously, this is not the public hearing, but I think there's some things that need to be said. We actually just talked about it in legal, but um, on, the, on the latest draft on page four, which is Article 7, Zoning and Development Requirements, um, we are uh, introducing a new uh, zoning district known as Floating Zoning, Floating Zone District. And so if, if both Mr. Patterson and Mr. Mavers can have just a brief discussion on what that is, because I think it's important to bring attention to the fact that this is something really new. Okay. This is something that uh, Parker and I discussed extensively. We wanted to figure out how best to regulate the location, the time, place, and manner. We could do this one of two ways. I originally proposed doing an overlay zone, which is something everybody may be familiar with. Overlay zones have been used extensively, uh, not only here in the city of Roswell, but in many places around the area. And doing our research, Parker informed me that we could also use the possibility of a floating zone. We dug into that and we both agreed that a floating zone was the best way ago to go about this. The biggest difference between a floating zone and an overlay zone is the way it's driven. Okay? A, a uh, overlay zone is driven by the city council. It's driven by the people of the city of Roswell. You put it in place before the fact. You say, this is the area, this overlay is for our historic district. And we decide the boundaries of the historic district and we put it in place. A floating zone, though, is driven by the end user. It is driven by the people that want to develop it. We establish the framework for the floating zone and then the burden of proof to make sure that that floating zone fits, that zoning designation fits within our code. That burden of proof, that responsibility is on the developer or the applicant to that. So in this particular case, what we've done is we've established two different floating zones. The C-CAN zone, they are commercial cannabis zone, and then our I-CAN zone, the industrial cannabis zone. The C-CAN zone is restricted to certain areas within our C-2 zoning district. The I-CAN zone is going to be restricted to certain areas within the, in, the I-2 industrial zoning district. So it is, we have done the research, we found that not only is it a very legitimate way to uh, provide for the, the ability for us to regulate it, but also for us to continue to move forward with uh, giving people the opportunity to develop these sites based upon the requirements within the state legislation. And it also gives us the ability to establish a framework for the development of those sites, ensuring that we take proper uh, precautions relative to security, proper precautions relative to uh, environmental rules, uh, water usage, effluent disposal, all of those other things. So it seemed to be the best way to go. But please do not confuse a floating zone with the concerns that some of us have over spot zoning. Okay? A lot of people think that a floating zone, oh, that's just a different way of doing spot zoning. It is not. A spot zoning we, is something you have a framework in and then you break the rules under your general plan. Okay? The, this is going right into our code. It is driven. It is the requirements are set forth early. It is just a matter for a, the particular developer or the applicant to review our code, go out, find a piece of property, and then make an appropriate application. But the burden of proof that that property fulfills all the requirements of our development code falls on the developer, not on the city. Thank you. Let me add really quickly that one of the big upshots is that every cannabis establishment will effectively require a zone change because the zone floats in theory until the applicant says, here's my parcel, I want 
to do cannabis here, then it comes in, does it meet all the requirements? Yes, then they go to council and council approves a zone change for that specific lot and then it stops floating and lands there on that spot. This also gave us the opportunity by developing the ICANN and the CCAN zone and putting forward in there the, the different types of development that were allowed. It will require not only, the developments will require not only a zone change to either CCAN or ICANN, but they will also be required to do a conditional use permit. And right in our ordinance, it will be required that all of that come before the city council. This was also a way to make sure that these types of decisions eventually ended up in front of this body and you are the final approving authority of any of these developments that come forward in the future. Thank you. Councilor Stubbs, do you have anything else you'd like to add? I do. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, just a few things. So as, as people are, are looking at this, um, I think it's important to know, as, as was just previously said, is this is kind of the beginning of, of what we will probably be adding to this particular chapter of code. And I hope everyone recognizes that there are a lot of places within this document that say reserved. We've made basically an outline of this ordinance, um, but there are a lot of places, like I say, that we'll be filling in later. So if you'll recognize, notice that that's what a lot of that reserved area is for, is, is for the addition. Um, uh, one other thing is that um, we are stipulating that any final licensure uh, for uh, cannabis use is going to come to the full city council as opposed to the planning and zoning commission so every application will be uh, will be will be brought to this body um, to, to review uh, I, on page um, 8 of 14 of the uh, latest document I'm looking at um, Section 2764, prohibited districts. Uh, we've made a few changes to A, B, and C, which we're, we've already seen, but I'm calling to everyone's attention um, D, which is the Roswell Air Center. And since that is industrial, I think we thought it was important that we recognize the fact that the FAA has some stipulations of their own and that that um, we will definitely recognize. And then, um, Again, I realize this isn't the public hearing, but again, as people go through this, on page 12, um, there is a new section 27-153, which is previously approved non-operational uses, which uh, we felt at this time needed to be added. So just to bring to your attention some of those newer things, if either of you want to address it, I think you know, pro tem, it would be appropriate. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's see if there are any questions, then we'll come to, to that and see if they're at the end there. Now, reminded, this is not, you know, for the, for the ordinance that we're, 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 we're voting to, to advertise uh, for the public hearing, but uh, we want to hear from any counselor that has something they would like to discuss at this time. Does anybody have anything at this time? Councilor Kennard. Um, I just wanted to mention I was uh, on GoTo for the legal and um, I appreciate the work that the legal uh, committee has put into this. Um, I, I, realize, uh, I realized when I was reading it, uh, the reserved areas, I, I mean, I think the framework is the most important and obviously we're not going to know all of the issues that are going to arise. So the, the fact that it's a working document, I appreciate that and thank you for your work. All right. Another council, council uh, yes, go ahead, Councilor Roebuck. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I want to echo that. I do appreciate the work that the counselors and, and staff has put into this. This is obviously a very important issue, and it's a very dicey issue. Um, with, there's a lot of opinions out there. Um, and I know that uh, we are working to, um, obviously, we have to uh, comply with our, with our friends in Santa Fe. Um, but we also want to, as best as we possibly can, reflect the will of our constituents here. And so I appreciate the, the hard work you guys have been doing to give us the appropriate tools that we can hopefully do both. I yield. All right. Are there any other counselors? Councilor Orpesa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, I haven't read the, the, the wording on, on the... Uh, 
concerning this issue statutorily. However, uh, I don't. I don't believe, and maybe you can can address this for me. I don't believe that there is any language in there that uh, uh, addresses any negative effects that cannabis has on certain individuals. If, for instance, if there's some kind of psychological effect, uh, is there any monies in there? that will help uh, address these issues with, uh, with these type of individuals? Those kind of things are not necessarily within the purview of this ordinance. However, is Kimberly still here? She is, okay. Kimberly Rutley is here from uh, La Casa. Uh, the, um, in, I'm sorry, it's the, the full name of your, the company, La Casa Behavioral Health. And we are working with her. Uh, I have had one meeting. We are in constant contact via email and other things. She is reviewing our ordinance. She's also working on coming up with a complete education plan, a, a complete plan that will uh, help deal with the potential negative effects, the negative side effects. Many of the provisions and the restrictions that you see in our ordinance right now are designed to keep the cannabis, whether it's a recreational, medicinal, or home grow, and that's our biggest concern is some of the home grows, uh, out of the hands of children and out of the hands of our most vulnerable populations. And we're doing the best we can with that. Uh, we do know that we are big, we have already begun, or La Casa has already begun an advertising campaign. I believe we have billboards going up around town. And are we ready to announce your joint project with the, uh, uh, with, with the raceway? Okay. Okay. One of the things that uh, they are doing, because the uh, Alien Motor Speedway has a very active program where they deal with children, and uh, children racing, children learning, the, and it's a family-oriented facility. They are the first of our local businesses to actively participate in a education campaign, and they have graciously donated billboard space, uh, space on their uh, website, space on their Facebook page and other places, you're going to see a number of campaigns basically surrounding the education for children. So we'll start them very early and get them to understand the dangers of cannabis consumption and driving and, and other things that go on. So we're working on that end of it, uh, Counselor, and we'll continue to work on it uh, to the best of our ability. Okay, I, I guess my next question is addressed to uh, uh, City Attorney. Is it possible for the city to, to come up with some kind of program in, in case that we do have these type of situations? Yes, I, I don't see any reason why not. I mean, I think that's kind of what Kevin is alluding to is that the city, I mean, we don't have any funds appropriated to a specific program right now that's not allocated in the budget, but that's kind of the concept going forward is to have some kind of a city <coughs> program to address these kind of issues that arise relating to health and safety. I just want to make sure I understand your, 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 your answer. The answer is the city can appropriate some monies for some kind of programs? Yes. Okay, thank you. Councilor Pesa, you still have the floor. Okay, thank you. Is there another? I, before we go, I did, just wanted to say, since that was brought up, I appreciate uh, La Casa uh, Community uh, Behavioral Health Services uh, gave us a, uh, gave me a packet, and I'm sure she could supply all of us with one. Just some interesting things. Uh, the University of North Carolina Chapel here, Hill did a research uh, of uh, youth between the ages of 15 and 19 and found that youth exposed to advertising are seven times more likely to use cannabis weekly. Also, New Mexico is the highest youth marijuana use in the country. And uh, just since 2015, use before age 13 has tripled, or almost tripled. Um, you know, these are alarming figures, and that's, that's sort of why our community, uh, we, we as a council, is trying to get ahead of this and trying to protect uh, those that are most vulnerable in these situations. So I want to make that, I'd like that, to comment uh, just real quickly on that, Councilor Perry. The, uh, 
the work that we're doing and the work that, that Kimberly and her organization have done in providing that background information is a key component when we're deciding how we regulate time, place, and manner. Mm -hmm. okay? We're not doing this arbitrarily. It's not being done capriciously. We have the scientific evidence and we have the information that will allow us to lean on that so that if anybody questions why we are doing the things we are doing, we will be able to point to this scientific data this data that's already, this information that's already out there and say, because of these health concerns, because of these concerns in the community, because of all of this, this is why we need to accomplish this. And we will be expanding our relationship uh, with uh, La Casa and with Ms. Rudley and continuing to ensure that the education and the information gets out there to as many people as possible. Absolutely. Uh, recognize Councillor Best. Okay, if I remember right in our legal committee that I sat through, January 1 of 22, they're going to, the state is going to begin licensing cannabis training and education programs, education programs. So that tells me there's gonna be grants out there somewhere that La Casa, the city of Roswell, somebody can get to help us combat this education to where the city doesn't have to pull it out of the budget that somebody will get up off their hiney and be proactive and step forward and educate without the city having to spend infrastructure money or whatever in this area it's just all about being proactive thank you maybe that's one more uh, issue we can get Kimberly on top of and she can keep us well educated as to the availability of those funds the state statutes also do provide that at the state level there's supposed to be established a, a cannabis health and safety committee that's going to be uh, looking into all this stuff and doing research and all of that. So I assume that that will be one avenue that we can look at as well going forward. I want to recognize anyone else who has any questions, concerns, comments? Okay. I'd like I, to speak. Okay, uh, Councillor Moore, I hear you. You are recognized. You have the floor. I'm, I guess, we all know, you know, I guess I'm a little different, and I, I'm struggling with this, and I know we have no choice over about, you know, it going, going for, you know, going about, go, you know, what we have to do has to be done. Um, I, I am floored, you know, probably by, you know, the, the information that uh, Councilor Perry shared, and I'd also, if y'all like, I like that information, the packet that uh, Councilor Perry said that he, that he has. Um, I'd like if somebody would put it in my box or something. Um, I those those numbers are astounding. We're struggling with crime and other issues around here. And I like I said, I know we have to have this process because the state said so. And you know, and we when we first started mentioning it, I said, I, well, we need to make this as difficult as possible so that everybody's not jumping on the bag and landing on day one. Um, education, you know, we know they can find any information. To, to agree with anything they anybody wants to say is okay or not okay. So I just want to um, be able to know that you know I'm not I'm not going to vote yes on anything. Not a, not anything to do with this. It's not something I believe in as you know a Christian. And I I talked to some people. Of course, some of the young people. And I think my biggest concern is because I know you know I'm I'm in high school, so I see so many young people you know already on you know, the quote unquote gateway, you know, drug is not the gateway anymore, it is the gate, you know, so um, they're just, it's just a lot for our young people to deal with. We already struggled enough. They're saying education is, is all the kids are dropping out and we already having those issues. And so this is just not something I feel that's good for our community, good for our children, good for our, you know, for Roswell, everybody, you know, we're gonna agree to disagree if we want, but I'm just, you know, this is just not something that I want to see going forward, be happy with, you know, I understand we'll go through the procedures and do what we need to do, but I'm just not okay. And I'm, I, I yield. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Uh, let me, let me say, uh, let me just remind one more time and uh, we'll move forward. This is only for advertisement. The actual uh, debate on the actual ordinance will take place at the next meeting. Uh, but uh, if there's anyone else who has anything else to say, we did have one person sign up that wanted to speak upon this subject. So uh, Juliana Halverson, if you'll come up. Uh, 
state your name and address for the record and you have three minutes and I'll have to sort of stay firm with that so okay so Juliana Halverson with Main Street Roswell and just to make it clear Main Street Roswell does not take an official position on the cannabis sales but we did do a survey uh, we had roughly uh, 30 people well, we had 30 people answer we have roughly 90 merchants downtown so a third and I only have five copies I'm sorry but it's 51 to 48 percent want the cannabis sales and 48 percent don't um, I d I don't think a lot of these and they're business people and they're looking at it as to me I don't know Jacob did you take the survey too yeah I think a lot of them they're just looking at the financial impact they want to make money off of it I don't think they're realizing there's not a bank I think in Roswell I think there's only one bank in the entire United entire state of New Mexico that will actually fund any business that does cannabis sales so if there's a store now that sells you know trinkets and then they want to start selling cannabis they can't bank at all anywhere locally it's so far at this point point. and I think um, once you have your public hearing I think maybe some with information from La Casa that actually shows statistics that how it, it, it's I personally think it's not good I think they may change their mind so I have these copies of these surveys we're going to run the survey for Main Street Roswell to our merchants through the 31st and it does not include the zoning recommendations that you guys were talking about it includes the current zoning that Roswell has so that's all right it. if anyone wants any copies I have them so. thank you very much I appreciate <laughs> that information any other discussion okay seeing no more discussion there again we are looking at proposed ordinance 21-09 uh, to consider approving to advertise for public hearing um, it's what we have at this time we have a motion we have a second any other discussion this will be a roll call if we could uh, I had been requested to do a roll call, so let's do a roll call uh, from from the uh, council at this time. Councillor Moore. Councillor Moore. Yes. Councillor Sanchez. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is there? I was saying yes to you call me. Okay, okay. so let me, let, okay, me, let me take the floor for just a second and make some clarifications. So, Councilor Moore, it, we are now voting as to whether or not we move forward with proposed ordinance 21 09 to advertise, advertise to hold a public hearing at the next city council meeting. A yes confirms that you're in favor of allowing for the public hearing. A no is that you're not in favor of the public hearing. Okay. Thank you. So that will be a no. Thank you. Councilor Sanchez? No. Councilor Foster? Yes. Councilor Kennard? Yes. Councilor Perry? Yes. Councilor Stubbs? Yes. Councilor Roebuck? Yes. Councilor Best? Yes. Councilor Oropesa? Yes. Motion passes 7 to 2. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to the next. Uh, on the agenda, consider approval of Mayor Kintai's nomination for Roswell City Council Ward 4 vacancy. Councilor Roebuck. Thank you, Bertem. Uh, I move that we approve Mayor Kintai's nomination of Daniel Lopez for Roswell City Council Ward 4 vacancy. We have a motion by Councilor Roebuck and a second by Councilor Foster that we approve Mayor Kintai's nomination for the City Council vacancy of Ward 4, uh, Daniel Lopez. Do we have any questions or comments? And then I'm going to, I believe Mr. Lopez is here, is that correct? Some of us may not know you. Why don't you come up to the podium here to the hot seat for a moment? I told him he didn't have to speak if he didn't want to. Well, he still doesn't <laughs> have to. <laughs> if you'd like to introduce yourself to the council, we'd be more than obliged to, to hear a little bit about you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Daniel Lopez. Pull the microphone up just a little closer for us. Thank you. Copy that. My name is Daniel Lopez. Um, been a lof lifelong resident of Roswell. I was born in California. Uh, moved here when I was about two years old. Uh, graduated in, uh, Roswell High School in 93. Um, it's kind of a short story. Uh, graduated Roswell in 93. Um, went to leadership Roswell 17. Uh, I've been an insurance agent here in Roswell for about 15 years self-employed. Um, I'm a vice chair of the Tobosa board. 
um, chair of the uh, Friends of the Chavez County Sheriff's Office. Um, like to be kind of active in the community, um, and I'm pretty excited to to try and move forward with this and, and uh, do good for the city of Roswell. Fantastic. All right. Do we have any questions or comments from from council? Councilor Robot. Thank you. Uh, uh, I just want to say I did have a chance to sit down with, with Mr. Lopez and had a, a great discussion with him just about city council and what we do. Um, and I feel like that uh, he certainly has the right kind of mind frame um, and the commitment to this community to, to serve on this on this council. I yield. Someone else. All right, we will move forward with a vote. We have a motion and a second that we approve Mayor Ken Ty's nomination for the Roswell City Council Ward 4 vacancy. Mr. Lopez, and it has been requested there be roll call vote on that as well. A, a, a yes confirms that you are in favor. A no is not in favor. Councillor Moore. Yes. Councillor Sanchez. Yes. Councillor Foster? Yes. Councillor Kennard? Yes. Councillor Perry? Yes. Councillor Stubbs? Yes. Councillor Robeck? Yes. Councillor Best? Yes. Councillor Oropesa? Yes. Motion passes unanimous. Well, Mr. Lopez, congratulations, and we look forward to working with Apologies. you. Apologies. Do I get a vote on this? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. We got to get a judge to swear you in, and then right. you can vote. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We look, look forward, forward to working with you. Look forward to working with you all as well. Yes, God bless. Yes, sir. All right, moving on to number three. Consider ratifying the city manager's decision to suspend the internal city council policy and issue the PO. If I could uh, uh, get a motion from uh, uh, Councilor Kennard. I don't often get to correct you, but it was number four on the agenda. Oh, thank you. There you go. <laughs> Um, I'd like to move to consider ratifying the city's manager, city manager's decision to suspend the internal city council policy and issue the PO. We have a motion and a second that we uh, approve. Mr. Neb. Yes, sir. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, city councilors. Uh, this is just a simple little item uh, uh, dealing with an internal policy and my decision uh, to make a decision in contrary to that, that policy. We have a financial uh, policy that states that the city manager can make decisions up to $250,000 uh, to move money around within the budget. Uh, the police department has approximately 10 vehicles that they are purchasing uh, to replace some that have been worn out and everything. And if you're not aware of the climate out there with vehicles, uh, they are very hard to come by right now because they're not making them as fast as they had been. And so we have the opportunity for 10 vehicles off of a, a lot up in Albuquerque that meets all of the conditions required by the state. Uh, the purchase is in the amount over $300,000. And so thereby I asked for a PO to be uh, submitted in order to protect the uh, the purchase of those vehicles and because it is in conflict with an internal policy that has been approved by the city council i am asking for the ratification of that decision and, and i wanted to explain exactly why i why i went against an internal policy so i'll stand for any questions but the, the vehicles are over three hundred thousand uh, dollars they will work very well for the pd and so we are just trying to help them take care of that issue thank you Questions and comments from council? All right. I, we have a motion, we have a second that we ratify the city manager's decision to suspend the internal city council policy and issue the, the PO. And if we could, uh, roll call as well. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Sanchez? Yes. Councillor Foster? Yes. Councillor Kennard? Yes. Councillor Perry? Yes. Councillor Stubbs? Yes. Councillor Robeck? Yes. Councillor Best? Yes. Councillor Oropesa? Yes. Motion passes unanimous. Fantastic. City Manager's report and announcements. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't really have much there. Uh, we do have a special City Council meeting next Thursday uh, to approve the final budget. 
It is required to be, have that, that action completed before the end of July 31st because we're required to submit the budget to the state uh, within that time frame. So uh, I believe we're at 5 o'clock again that night, and uh, it is right after another meeting that night as well, I believe. Maybe not. There is no other meeting. That's right. We, we moved them around. So uh, Finance Committee did have a special session in order to talk about that. So I believe we have all the details worked out. There were a couple requests for amendments to the budget, and they will be introduced at that time. I believe they have not been placed into the budget yet. So uh, those actions will go forward. I did have one question actually for Mr. Mavers um, as far as um, on the cannabis, because we had a legal committee prior to this meeting today, and we made amendments to the document of this new ordinance. And I know we had public members here as well, too. I wanted to make sure that I wanted to know from staff's viewpoint how long it's going to take to get it published back out so that somebody can see the actual language of that, of that ordinance. I mean, I think we can get the changes that were done at legal were very minor. So I think we can get that tomorrow. It, okay. Are you ready? So we will, we will try to get that so that it is available to the public before the weekend uh, so that they can start reviewing that document because uh, as, as all of you have said, there, it's a very comprehensive document, but uh, we want to make sure that that gets out uh, as quickly as possible and, and uh, so that people can start to see exactly all the work that you guys have put into that. Other than that, I have no other uh, reports or announcements to stand for any questions if you have any. Questions, comments? All right. Uh, just very quickly, uh, I think uh, that, uh, from what I understand, we were required to do public comment. If there's any public comment at this time, any anyone had something come forward? I didn't have anything signed up. All right. Well, thank you so much. We got through all of that. It's 544. Everyone enjoy the rest of your week and the weekend. We stand adjourned. Thank you.